The Adventures of Pinocchio. Another classic read aloud story uh, by Jeff Babcock, retired school teacher uh, from Alaska. That's me. Okay, we began our story seven days ago. Eight days ago, actually. And today I will read chapters 9 and 10. So again, we've got The Adventures of Pinocchio by C. Colati, translated from the uh, Italian uh, by Carol Della Chisa, and illustrated by Attilio Mussini. Okay, and again, originally all that was put together, uh, the book was 1911, it came to the U.S. in 1925, and this is one of many, but this is, this is I, what I found to be one of the best because of because of uh, the illustrations and it was published in september of 1968 by macmillan publishing company both in new york and in london okay chapter nine pinocchio sells his abc book to pay his way into the marionette theater can you believe it up oh, there he is he's got a school book he's uh, on the way to the the school and see Pinocchio hurrying off <clears throat> to school with his new ABC book under his arms and as he walked along his brain was busy planning hundreds of wonderful things building hundreds of castles in the air and talking to himself he said oh in school I will <clears throat> I learn to read uh, tomorrow to write uh, and the day after tomorrow I'll do arithmetic and then clever as I am I, I can earn a lot of money and with the very first pennies I make I'll buy father a new cloth coat cloth did i say uh, no it shall be of gold and silver with diamond buttons that poor man he certainly deserves it for after all isn't he in his short sleeves because he was good enough ah, to buy a book for me and on this cold day too oh fathers are indeed good to their children and as he talked to himself he thought he heard sounds of pipes and drums coming from a distance and he stopped to listen those sounds came from a little street that led to a small village along the shore. Oh, what can that noise be? Ah, oh, what a nuisance that I have to go to school. Otherwise, I'm, I'm uh. And there he stopped, very much puzzled. And he felt he had to make up his mind for either one thing or another. Sh should he go to school or should he follow the pipes? Uh, uh, today I'll follow the pipes, huh? <laughs> and tomorrow I'll go to school. And there's always plenty of time to go to school, decided the little rascal at last, shrugging his shoulders. No sooner said than done, he started down the street, going like the wind. On he ran, and louder grew the sounds of the pipe and drum. Do, 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 lily, beep, 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 zoom. Zoom, boom, 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 zoom, 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 zoom. Suddenly, he found himself in a large square full of people standing in front of a little wooden building painted in brilliant colors. Ah, what, 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 what is this house? Pinocchio asked a little boy near to him. Ah, well, read the sign and you'll know. Well, uh, uh, I'd like to read, but somehow uh, uh, I can't uh, today. Oh, really? Well, I'll read it to you. Know then that written in letters of fire, I see the words Great Marionette Theater. Oh, when, when did the show, when did the show start? Well... It's starting right now. Well, uh, 
Oh, how much does one have to pay to get in? Four pennies. Pinocchio, who was wild with curiosity to know what was going on inside, lost all of his pride. And he said to the boy shamelessly, <gasps> will, will you give me four pennies until tomorrow? Well, <clears throat> I'd give them to you gladly, answered the other, poking fun at him. Eh, but just now, eh, I can't give them to you. <laughs> Well, yeah. well, for the price of four pennies, I'll sell you my coat. Ah, uh, your coat. If it rains, what shall I do with a coat of flowered paper? I could not take it off again. Well, uh, do you, do you want to buy my shoes? They are only good enough to light a fire with. Well, uh, what about my hat? Ah, oh, fine bargain indeed, a cap of dough. The mice might come and eat it from my head. <laughs> Pinocchio was almost in tears, and he was just about to make one last offer when he lacked, but he lacked the courage to do so. And he hesitated, and he wondered. He could not make up his mind but at last, he said, eh, oh, eh, Will you give me four pennies for this book? Uh, I am a boy and I buy nothing from boys, said the little fellow, with far more common sense than the marionette. Oh, <coughs> I'll give you four pennies for your ABC book, said a rag picker who stood by, and then and there the book changed hands. And to think that poor Geppetto, old Geppetto, sat at home in his shirt sleeves, shivering with cold, brrr, having sold his coat to buy that little book for his son. Chapter 10. This one's kind of scary now, okay? The marionettes recognize their brother, Pinocchio, and they greet him with loud cheers. But the director, Fire Eater, happens along, and poor Pinocchio almost loses his life. Well, <clears throat> quick as a flash, Pinocchio disappeared into the marionette theater, and then something happened which almost caused a riot. The curtain was up, and the performance had started, and Harlequin and Pulcinella were reciting on the stage as usual, and they were threatening each other with sticks and blows. <laughs> And the theater was full of people enjoying the spectacle and laughing till they cried at the antics of the two marionettes. Well, the play continued for a few minutes, and then suddenly, without any warning, Harlequin stopped talking. Turning toward the audience, he pointed to the rear of the orchestra, yelling, <gasps> <coughs> wildly at the same time. Look! Look! Am I asleep? Oh, or awake? Or do I really see Pinocchio there? Oh, yes, yes, it is Pinocchio, screamed Pulcinella. Oh, yes, well, it is, it is, shrieked Signora Razora, peeking in from the side of the stage. Oh, it's Pinocchio! Woo, ha, ha, it's Pinocchio! Yelled <coughs> all the marionettes pouring out of the wings. It's Pinocchio! It is our brother! Oh, Pinocchio! Hurrah for Pinocchio! Pinocchio, come up to me, shouted Harlequin. Come to the arms of your wooden brothers! And at such a a loving invitation. Pinocchio, with one leap, 
from the back of the orchestra, he found himself in the front rows, and with another leap, he was on the orchestra, orchestra leader's head. And with a third leap, he landed on the stage. It is impossible to describe the shrieks of joy, the warm embraces, the knocks, and the friendly greetings with which that strange company of dramatic actors and actresses received Pinocchio. It was a heart-rending spectacle, but the audience, seeing that the play had stopped, became angry, and they began to yell, Hey! Was it the play? The yes, the play! We want the play! The yelling was of no use, for the marionettes, instead of going on with their act, made twice as much racket as before. Ha <laughs> oh, Pinocchio! <laughs> and lifting up Pinocchio on their shoulders, carried him around the stage in triumph. Wow, look at that. There's Pinocchio right there, jumping on the orchestra leader's head. But everybody in the crowd is getting a little bit angry. And there's the stage up there. Woo! Okay. At that very moment, Dun, dun, dun. The director came out of his room, and he had such a fearful experience that one look at him would fill you with horror. His beard was as black as pitch, and so long that it reached from his chin down to his feet, and his mouth was as wide as an oven and his teeth like yellow fangs, and his eyes two glowing red coals, and in his huge hairy hands a long whip made of green snakes and black cat's tails twisted together, swished through the air in a dangerous way. And at the unexpected apparition. No one dared even to breathe. One could, one could almost hear a fly go by. Those poor marionettes, one and all, trembled like leaves in a storm. Why have you brought such excitement into my theater? The huge fellow asked Pinocchio with the voice of an ogre suffering <clears throat> with a cold. Oh, 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 believe me, your honor, uh, the fault was not mine. Enough. Be quiet. I'll take care of you later. And as soon as the play was over, the director went to the kitchen where a fine big lamb was slowly turning on the spit, and more wood was needed to finish cooking it. And he called Harlequin and Pulsinella and said to them, Bring that marionette to me. He looks as if he were made of well-seasoned wood. He'll make a fine fire for this spit. <laughs> Harlequin and Pulsinella hesitated a bit, and then frightened by a look from the, their master, they left the kitchen to obey him. And a few minutes later, they returned, carrying poor Pinocchio, <laughs> who was struggling and wriggling and squirming like an eel and crying pitifully, Oh, Father, save me! Ah, ah, I don't want to die! Ah, ah, I don't want to die! Okay, I told you it was going to be scary. Chapter 11 Fire Eater Sneezes and Forgives Pinocchio, who saves his friend Harlequin from death.